Hi everybody. In this video, we're going to be describing the CBT technique of explaining how thoughts create feelings. Now, a large part of CBT is psychoeducation. And psychoeducation is powerful before really jumping into different interventions. Simply describing the, the playing field can be a very powerful type of intervention in of itself. Now, CBT centers around the belief that thoughts bring about feelings. Now, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves because it's, it's also true, you know, we see in the research that feelings actually do produce thoughts as well. And, you know, behaviors produce thoughts and, and feelings motivate, produce behaviors. So we kind of have a, a triangle of, of thoughts, feelings, and actions influencing each other, causing one to come about. So it can get pretty complex. But for this technique, you know, it can be you know, the way we're, the, the perspective we're adopting here is a more simplistic one, that thoughts do influence feelings. Now, when going through this sort of psychoeducation with your client, you know, it helps actually to draw out the triangle of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, you know, to, to have a, a reference point as you describe this idea. And basically what you're trying to get across is that, you know, these things are independent from one another. Now, it, that's, a, that's a bit of, a, of, of an abstraction. It's not true, but, but it's functionally true. And that's really what's most important here. You don't want to overwhelm the client with all the nitty-gritty, you know, neuropsychological facts about how emotions are really intertwined with thoughts and, and you know, really a thinking demands having feelings. And it, it might be useful to touch touch those a little bit, but, you know, the idea of these interventions in general is you're really trying to give something very simplistic and easy to use in a person's life that they're able to reproduce outside of the clinical room. So you're, you're not making your client a CBT therapist themselves. So keeping it simplistic, thoughts are different than feelings. Thoughts, actually the way you think about something, influences the feelings you have. That's step one. Step two in this intervention is setting up a bit of an exercise where you're proposing different scenarios, different thoughts that a person could have about those scenarios, and what your client supposes the feelings would be if the person had that thought. So, for example, you know, proposing the scenario of somebody standing on, on a guard railing, well, one possible thought a person could have is, I'm going to fall. Well, what emotion would naturally be elicited? Fear. But you can take that same, same situation and propose the following thought. That's an amazing view. Well, that thought inspires the feeling of awe and, you know, love of nature. A dramatically different feeling than one of fear. And so you want to run through different scenarios like this, showing the client how powerful thoughts are in determining the feelings they then have. Now, this, this, this technique is pretty deep because, you know, the, the fundamental problem you're really running into as, you know, you know, as a therapist working with your client, you know, no one's coming in, com generally speaking, you know, no one's coming in complaining about the scenario. Generally speaking, people aren't complaining about the thought they're having. It's more the emotion that's a result of those two things. And you're stuck because you can't just tell somebody, don't have the emotion. That's horribly invalidating, you know. And it's it's a good rule of thumb, just as a as a meta intervention, is just never invalidate your clients. Now I'm not saying you're not you know don't you know you're not trying to lie to them. That's not the point. But you know their experience on some level is quite valid. Makes a lot of sense. And the most invalidating thing you could do is say no, you. Shouldn't feel, shouldn't feel angry there. Nope, nope, that doesn't make sense. It's almost like telling somebody who uh, touched a hot iron, no, you're not in pain. You just can't do that. Even though that is the central problem you're trying to address, the feeling, it's, it's almost like you can't actually directly address that problem. What you have to do is be a little sneaky. You have to address and focus on the things surrounding that problem in order to find the solution. 
So in this case here, what you're really doing is you're highlighting, well, you know, what you feel is what you feel, and that's valid. You know, it makes 100% sense that, that you'd feel those feelings you're having. But I'm curious, though, what if you tried this thought out for size? You, know, you, you saw your friends walking, you know, the opposite side of the street. You waved at them and didn't. You know, and the thought that you had was, they hate me. I'm nothing. I'm not worth hanging out with. And it makes a lot of sense if you had those thoughts that you'd be devastated. But just try on for size for a second. The thought they didn't see me. The streets incredibly noisy and busy. They couldn't hear me over that that ruckus of the of the bus pulling out. How does that change the feeling you're having? And you'll notice the client, you know, he'll mull it over. He might not like it initially, you know, it wasn't his original thought, it wasn't his original feeling, but he starts to get a sense of, oh, wait a second, okay, yeah, that makes sense, you know, that could be. And it's opening up more space, more possibility for your client to interpret the life he's living and might give him enough calm to be able to start finding different solutions, finding, finding different ways of tackling these experiences just by trying on other thoughts. 